First, an introduction. What do we mean by hitboxes, frame data, hurtboxes? Well, hitboxes are what the game carries damage data in. Hurtboxes are where the game registers hits take place. Frame data is the amount of frames it takes for these actions to occur. I'm a strong believer in showing and not just telling. So what if I told you? You could learn about any move in the game with just three resources. All the resources I used and I'm showing here are in the description should you be interested in learning about any move you desire. How do we do this? Well, let's pick a random move. Let's say Bowser Jr.'s forward air. Learning anything about any move in the game is a three-step process and very simple. First, go to ultimateframedata.com and find the move's hitbox GIF. Then, navigate to smashultimateviewer.com and find the script for the move, in this case, Koopa Jr. Attack Air F. In order to compare and figure out which hitbox is which, take a look at the ID and the size. In most of the hitbox viewing software, red indicates higher ID number. However, this is not always the case, as hitbox colors can be altered in the viewers themselves. If you take a look at the ID numbers and the sizes, you can also see next to the size there is positional data. X equals 7, X equals 1.2. The bigger hitbox is further positioned, meaning it is definitely the red hitbox. All moves internally have something called hitbox priority. This is not the priority that occurs when two hitboxes clank. This is the priority that occurs when hitboxes of the same move overlap on a hurtbox. The lower the ID of the hitbox, the higher the priority. So, now we know that Bowser Jr.'s forward air will likely strong spot a majority of the time, considering the weak spot is smaller and a lot of it overlaps with the strong spot of a higher priority. Nair is one of DDD's combo moves, frame 7 sweet spot and the move persists with a sour spot on frame 8 through 29, meaning the move is active for a total of 23 frames. There are two types of facing restrictions the game checks for, check positioning and check F. Check F is moves that have a facing restriction and check positioning are moves that do not but depend on the positioning of the striking hitbox. Nair is a check positioning hitbox and here is an example. Both Palus take the same knockback in different directions because of the side of the hitbox they are facing. Notice how I turn DDD around and they still launch the same? The direction DDD is facing does not matter, only the positioning of the hitbox when it strikes Palutena's hurtbox does. Strong Nair can plow through certain projectiles, Snake's up smash is the perfect example, even Sour Nair can destroy his up smash. This is the first slide with multiple colored hitboxes. From the tutorial, we know this indicated priority of the hitboxes when they overlap. I have labeled all damage values of colored hitboxes even if the moves don't have a sour spot. This will make it easier to explore sour spots in the future slides. This move's hitbox now perfectly matches the animation so much so that the hitbox is greatly reduced in size from Smash 4. Comes out frames 17 through 19, lasting 3 frames, this is one of DDD's killing aerials. This move has a facing restriction labeled checked B in the script, similar to check F, check front or check back. This move uses the Sakurai angle of 361. What the Sakurai angle does to bear is as percents increase, the angle of bear changes. At higher percents, Bear's launch angle is more diagonal, and at lower percents, it sends more horizontally. This is the effect of the Sakurai angle. Dare is actually three hitboxes, and will be the first move that we have explored to have sour spots out at the same time as the sweet spots. This is where the overlapping hitbox priority by ID number takes effect. The purple hitbox hits grounded opponents and is the grounded strong spot. It uses the Sakurai angle of 361 for grounded opponents. 
The pink hitbox is the sweet spot when spiking opponents, an angle of 270, which is typical for a spike. The beige outer hitbox is the sour spot and is capable of hitting both grounded and aerial opponents. The spike and strong spot are higher priority of that than the sour spot, meaning you want to bury this move into people rather than try spacing the tip. The hitbox looks off place because Dare swings down from above and enters the plane of battle from the Z axis. Take a look at Dare from another angle, this is the frame it spikes. Notice how it is still somewhat in the Z axis? Due to the slight angle, the hitbox has to be placed higher in order for it to look right in game. Do not worry about keeping this move fresh, use it as much as you possibly can and when you can because the final launching hit of the move is only 60 degrees. The final launching hit now does 5% which is up from Smash 4 but the launching angle got nerfed. Smash 4 had two launching angles 70 and 80 but only did 3% on launch. Use this move to rack damage. The multi hits are coded as 7 iterations of the same hitbox. The multi-hit hammerhead hitboxes glue people to the hammerhead and the yellow and beige hitboxes are supposed to scoot people up toward the hammerhead glue in order to be in place for the final hit. This hitbox has checked POS, check positioning, meaning that you can cross people up, forcing bad DI for earlier kills. To do this, you have to use the purple hitbox only. See in this example how no matter my spacing, the move always sends behind. Unless I can space just the purple hitbox, then the opponent launches away from BDD. Fair is an extremely good aerial now. Comes out frame 13 and lasts for 3 frames, covering a nice arc in front of BDD. Fair is an interesting aerial for several reasons. Fair, like Dare and Bear, also uses the Sakurai angle, can trip even though it's not in the script, can jab block at low percents, and can hit ledge hangs. It has no sour spots, both the red and purple hitbox do the same damage, knockback, and have the same angle, even when there are no sour spots, there still needs to be a hitbox in certain parts of the move. Hitboxes are bound to two mathematical shapes, spheres and domed cylinders. So far, all the hitboxes have been spheres. Keep an eye out as down tilt will be the first hitbox that is a domed cylinder. Here is an example of fair jab blocking at low percents and tripping despite having no trip chance. Jab is a fairly standard move, slow for a jab at frame 10, but has great range in comparison to other jabs. DDD's jab received the same treatment all jabs got going into ultimate. Impossible to show because they overlap, jab 1 and 2 are actually 5 hitboxes apiece. All the hitboxes you see are jab locking hitboxes with the Sakurai angle of 361. The final hitbox in jab 1 and 2, the orange, is actually 2 hitboxes overlapped. One hitbox has the angle of 361 and the other has the angle of 180. For those that played Smash 4, you'll remember the eons of trolling with the jab infinite. DDD's jab would pull people in. Those hitboxes still exist in the jab. The 180 degree hitboxes are supposed to pull people in, however at certain percents, the 180 degree hitbox will actually pull people behind DDD and put them in advantage. The rapid jab hitboxes and finisher are much larger than jab 1 and 2. The finisher reaches all the way head level with DDD as he swings up during the final hit. These two moves are the first of the grounded moves covered that have a stat called FAF, FAF or First Actionable Frame. However, in this video I have treated the first actionable frame slightly differently. FAF in this video will indicate total move duration, so the entirety of the animation of Jab 3 is 49 frames, meaning once Jab 3 starts, 49 total frames have to pass in game before your inputs are accepted again. For the unfamiliar, Smash runs at 60 FPS, so one frame is 1 60th of a second. So Jab 3 has roughly 0.81 seconds of animation from start to finish. 
Down tilt has a strong and sour spot more akin to Nair. The strong spot comes out frames 6 through 8, and then the sour spot replaces it for frames 9 through 13, making this move active for 8 frames. Active frames are weird, because the hitbox comes out frame 6, so the 6th frame is also included in total active frames. If you just do 13 minus 6, you get 7 frames, but you must add 1 to this because the move isn't only active between 6 through 13, but also on the 6th frame. 6, 7, 8, 9 is 4 frames, 10, 11, 12, 13 is also 4 frames, so the move is out for 4 plus 4 or 8 frames in total. Just keep in mind when the hitbox goes active to include that in calculations. This move can hit high ledge hanging characters who re-grab ledge from about this distance, one step away. Down tilt will also clank with any projectile doing less than 26.8% damage. Example shown is a non-fully charged charge shot from Samus which they all love to use. Different from how up air is coded, f tilt is not any iterations of the same move. The hitboxes themselves have different re-hit rates. The two hammerhead hitboxes, yellow and beige, have a re-hit rate of 4, while the higher priority hitboxes of red and purple have a re-hit rate of 3. This is why opponents can pop out of f tilt, less common in ultimate but still occurs. The re-hit rate of the inner hitboxes doesn't match up with the re-hit rate of the tip of the move, sometimes causing people to miss the final hitbox entirely. The final hit, only out for one frame, is large enough to two frame some characters. Due to it being out one frame, however, this is largely not worth it. Here, now listen to the cadence of the two re-hit rates. This move has a strong spot and sour spot out during the whole duration of the move. Luckily, the strong spot is higher priority, but unluckily, the sour spot is 0.5 hitbox units larger and position on top. If you want to hit the strong spot of up tilt, it generally requires spacings that don't utilize one of the best buffs from Smash 4 in this move. Useful head, arm, and shoulder intangibility. The iframes on those parts of Deity last the entire time the hitbox is out. Up tilt can combo into itself and is a useful anti-air. So useful it can beat Cloud's down air. To maximize its anti-air potential, keep in mind during this move DDD shifts his entire hitbox upwards, meaning up tilt needs to be used even slightly earlier than it visually appears as DDD gains about one hammerhead in vertical height. That will conclude part 1 of King DDD's hitboxes. Part 2 is already available and ready to be watched. I want to thank you if you watch the entire video. Consider leaving a like or sharing this video as each like helps tremendously. Leave a comment if you learned anything new, but for now I'd like to take a moment to honor the people who normally get overlooked for doing this type of work. Without these people, there wouldn't be these amazing hitbox gifts or websites full of frame data and scripts to go over. Here are Twitter handles of the people in question. Ruben Dahl, who prepares and puts up scripts on the internet for all to see. Mishima, a Japanese researcher who is always one of the first people to report changes to moves and character attributes. Kurogane Hammer, a master of all things frame data, created an entire website to dedication to all the details of the moves. Ultimate's data is still a work in progress. One person, 70 plus characters, takes some time. At Struggleton is the creator of 90% of the gifts I have shown in this video. At Zaki Myro is the creator of any gifts that show hurt boxes on DDD or any armor frames. At Metal Music Man is the creator of the website and app UltimateFrameDater.com. This website combines frame data with hitbox gifts all in one neat package. The parameters linked in the description are for special moves. Consider looking at these values if there is something about a special move that you cannot find in its script.